Some time ago, I was looking for a DI to record my guitar, since I didn't like the instrument preamps on my Focusrite sound interface. The tone is not that great, and there's an audible MIDI clock signal when it's set up to send MIDI data. Besides that, my gigging amp has some issues that I haven't been able to trace yet. Sometimes my amp just suddenly stops producing sound from its speaker, but the line-out still works. If I could connect this line-out to a mixing console and monitor speaker, I still have a decent backup, except that it has no speaker simulation. This is where the DI with speaker simulation could help out as well. Just so you know, DI stands for Direct Injection or Direct Input, and the DI box can convert a high impedance audio signal like guitar to a low impedance signal, like that of a microphone. Besides that, it uses its transformer so unbalanced audio is converted to balanced audio, which could help out with removing unwanted noise. So I looked around on some secondhand marketplaces and bought myself a cheap Behringer Ultra DI 600P. But it turns out this is a passive DI, which isn't recommended for passive sound sources like a guitar. So I started looking around for an active DI. Then I found the Behringer Ultra GI 100, which mainly has the same features as the DI 600P. Let's compare them. Both DIs have the same ins and outs, an unbalanced input jack and an unbalanced link output jack, and both jacks are directly connected to each other. Both the eyes have a balanced XLR output with switches for ground lift, filter and attenuator. Although the 600P only has a minus 30 dB option, while the GI100 has two minus 20 dB switches that you can combine for a volume drop of 40 dB. This makes both the eyes capable of handling speaker signals directly from a guitar amp for instance. But since there is no speaker load, you still have to connect an actual speaker to the link output jack. Or otherwise, you could damage your amp. So both the eyes are pretty similar, but the GI100 is an active device, so it needs power, either via a 9 volt battery or phantom power over the XLR. Let's start with the DI600P. This is a clean amp sim on a, on a Focusrite preamp. <laughs> It's a little noisy. Now the bay ringer. Okay, it's a little cleaner. Now with a high gain preamp. Still a little noisy. Especially on single coils. This is the nature of the guitar. Maybe if I engage the ground lift, it will be different. Yes, yeah, there's, there's no difference if I engage the ground lift or not. Uh, maybe with the filter. Now the guitar is straight into the focus right sound interface. You can instantly hear there's a lot more noise going on. Even more with the single coils. Now 
Now let's do the test with the MIDI clock. So this is the focus right preamp. And this is the DI box. So still there's still an audible MIDI clock when I send that. So it doesn't help with that. Now let's try the other one. So now I'm on the Ultra G, Ultra G100, and you can still hear the MIDI clock is still uh, quite present. Let's turn it off. So now some clean guitars. Still a little noise. Maybe if I engage the ground lift. Yeah, it's still there. First, let's try the focus right preamp. You can instantly hear there's a little more noise. So this was the focus on preamp with the instrument button engaged. So there should be some type of internal circuit that uh, gets converted to a low impedance signal. Well, let's try a high gain amp. This is the bay ringer and you can hear it's kind of noisy. With the focus right, yeah, I think it's equally it's noisy. Maybe if I engage the ground lift, it'll be a little different. Yeah, it's still kind of noisy. So this is how it sounds with the guitar straight into the DI box, but how does it do this sound when it's connected to an actual amp? So now the DI is connected straight to the amplifier, see over there, uh, and it's between the the speaker output and the actual speaker, and it sounds like this. And this is how it sounds with the filter engaged. So now it's on the dirty channel and the filter is disengaged. And it sounds like ass. <laughs> Maybe if I engage the filter it will be slightly better. Yeah, not really. <laughs> now here we go with the Ultra GI 100. Oh, that was the clean channel. So on the dirty channel without any filter, still sounds like a S. Let's engage this one. So now the filter or the cap sim is engaged. And 
Now it does sound kind of decent. On the clean channel with the camera simulation, this also sounds kind of cool. That was the Marshall amplifier. Now let's try the Black Star. So now the Black Star is hooked up to the uh, DI, and I still use the cabinet of the Marshall for the actual speakers since there is no load in the DI box and you can damage your amp when you don't have speakers connected. So, uh, speakers from the, from the valve state but still the, the sound is coming straight from the DI. And it sounds still pretty decent with the cabinet simulator. So this is the clean channel on the Blackstar amp, still with the speaker simulation engaged on the DI. So now let's compare the Behringer speaker simulation against the uh, stock Black Star speaker simulation. This is the Behringer. And this is the stock speaker simulation of the Black Star HD1R. So now the 600p is back there, I hope you can see it. Still on the black star. So that was with the filter disengaged. Now let's engage the filter. So that was the clean channel, so let's try the dirty channel. And it sounds like crap. <laughs> so yeah, the filter on the, on the 600 really doesn't compare to the uh, cabinet simulator on the, the GI100. So let's open it up. So as you can see, this is quite a simple design. Uh, you have the jacks over here, this is the input jack, this is the output jack, and this is the XLR connector, uh, this is the transformer. And you can see the, the attenuator and the, and the filter switch are really simple. You can see the, I think this is the attenuator, yes, it's, this is really just Two resistors that are engaged when you uh, when you press the button, and the same for the filter switch, which is just a resistor and a capacitor over here, and that's basically the most simple uh, filter that you can build. So no wonder why it's not really sounding that great with uh, with the speakers. Uh, same, same goes for the ground switch. Uh, 
when you engage the ground switch, it just, yeah, it connects the ground uh, to the XLR or not at all. So yeah, there's really, really basic circuitry for this DI. So this is the GI100. And as you can see, there's way more electronics in here. It's also on a decent circuit board as well. So now I've removed the, the housing. And as you can see, there's, yeah, like I said, a decent circuit board with way more components uh, compared to the uh, to the 600p. This is the transformer, as you can see. And there's a load more of uh, decent capacitors. Uh, there's a riser for the LED, and this uh, indicates the clipping. Yeah, like I said, way more complicated. Same goes for the other half. And this is the, the 9 volt connector, battery connector. And as you can see, there's a second transformer over here. So yeah, it's a way more complicated build and yeah, better designed as well. So this is how these DIs sound on their own. But how do they sound in the song? So these are two Behringer DI's, designed for guitars since they have a speaker simulation. The GI100 has a decent 4x12 cabinet simulator, which sounds ok as a backup, but I'm pretty sure there are better options available. The DI600P has just a simple low pass filter that cuts 3 decibels above 7.5 kHz. The only decent application for this is when you record clean amps. Other than that, it does the job of creating balanced signals out of unbalanced ones.